Welcome to section 4.5. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to talk about are insoluble compounds. So if you paid attention carefully, what you might have noticed was when I talked about the dissolution of ionic solids, I kept on saying only some ionic solids break up and dissociate. And the reason I made that a conditional statement is that there are certain ionic compounds that go into water and they do not dissolve. They are insoluble, meaning the solid is just going to sink to the bottom of our water beaker. So remember what's happening here. We can think of water as a bar magnet. And when I put things in water, what can happen is that water can start ripping off these ions because they are charged. Now, for insoluble compounds, what happens is water is not strong enough to rip apart the crystal structure, meaning the cations and the anions are going to stick together. And I say that the compound is insoluble and remains solid. It does not dissolve. Now, the question becomes is which ionic compounds are soluble and which ionic compounds are insoluble? Now, if you look in your book, you can look at table 4.1. What they give you are the solubility rules. Now, the format your book uses is that it gives you the solubility rules in terms of sentences. You can look at other books and what they'll have are charts of the solubility rules. And then there are still others where they use flow charts to help you to determine if a compound is soluble or not. On your information sheet, this is the one that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the solubility rules so that when you take the exam, you can refer to this. So if you want to practice doing your book problems, this is the chart that I would use. If you like the other charts, you are welcome to print them out and use them on your exam. So let's go ahead and give you guys an example on how to use the solubility rules. What I can do is I can go into lab and combine potassium chloride and silver nitrate. Now, what you guys will notice is that I have the states on these two compounds listed. These are both aqueous. When you see a compound listed as aqueous, you can say that this is a soluble compound. So one thing you should note that is when you have a soluble compound, it is going to be a clear solution. Now, I don't mean it's colorless. What I mean is it's clear. You can see through it. So to give you an example, if you think of apple juice, you can look through apple juice. When I mix solutions of these two compounds, these two clear solutions come together, and what I get is a cloudiness or a precipitate to form. Now, the question is, is what is that precipitate? So in chapter four, we're going to be talking about classes of reactions. And the first type of reaction that I want to talk about is called the metathesis reaction. Now in high school, sometimes they call this reaction the double replacement reaction. So it's the same type of reaction, but I like the word metathesis because it refers to what is actually happening. Metathesis is from the Greek to transpose. So what's going to happen in a metathesis reaction is you're going to combine two ionic compounds. And so remember that these ionic compounds are made of a cation and an anion. So a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion. Now in a metathesis reaction, I'm going to transpose my ions. So what this means is that the cation from my first compound is going to combine with the anion of my second compound. The anion from my first compound is going to go ahead and combine with the cation of my second compound. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm switching partners. So in my last picture, what you guys saw is that I had AgNO3, so the Ag is going to combine with the Cl, and I'm going to make AgCl. The K, or my potassium, is going to combine with my nitrate, and I'm going to make potassium nitrate. And so what you guys see here is I have labeled what each of the states of these two new products are going to be. Now, the way that I knew what these states were 
was I looked at my solubility rules. So for example, let's go ahead and look at KNO3. So if I wanted to know if KNO3 was soluble or not, one of the tips that I can give you is you guys should start by looking at the anion. If you look at the anion, we have the nitrate anion. So what I can do is I can look for nitrate in my solubility rules. And what my rules say is that all nitrates are soluble and there are no exceptions. So this is left blank and this is left blank. So what that means is, is that when I put KNO3 in solution, it is soluble, so it gets the label AQ or aqueous. But let's go ahead and look at my other product. My other product was AGCl. So I'm gonna look at my anion, the chloride anion. And so let's go ahead and look at the rules for chloride. Now, it first says that most chlorides are soluble. And you guys can have noted that when I described my reaction, one of my reactants was KCl. And you'll note I had an AQ over there because KCl is soluble. However, we shouldn't just stop at my first column. If I continue reading, what you'll see is that there are exceptions to most of these compounds being soluble. Most does not mean all. For example, if I have AGCl or HG2Cl, these compounds are considered insoluble. And so what I would mark is S for solid if I have an insoluble compound. And so going back to my picture, what you guys will see is that this precipitate is the AGCl product and not the KNO3. Now there's a couple of things that you have to understand with a metathesis reaction. For a metathesis reaction to occur, ions have to be removed from solution. Now we're gonna be talking about how to write the complete ionic, the net ionic, and the molecular equations. But I want you to keep this in mind when we start talking about writing out equations. Now the way that ions can be removed is if I go ahead and form an insoluble solid, a precipitate, or I can form a non-electrolyte because non-electrolytes do not break up into ions, or I form a gas. So in the next lecture, we're gonna go ahead and focus on precipitation reactions. Well, I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Cam1A.